Kurtz. I didn't expect to see you so soon. Welcome home. You're early if you're here for freshman ethics. Well, look, we're not saying freshman anymore. It's sexist. You now teach first year ethics, and I'm not so early. It's the first day. I thought that you'd want to get yourself together before. Oh, my flight was delayed. I came straight from the airport. I left my suitcase in my office upstairs. Look at you, dean of students. I go away for one semester. Oh, you know I've been working on this for you. Uh, just don't get complacent. You know me better than that. You have to be careful. They're going to be watching for any misstep. But living in a war zone has made you more paranoid. Not paranoid, vigilant. It's kept me alive all these years. It was terrible, Albert. So many refugees. And I've been a refugee. The Reagan doctrine in action. That'll pass. Yeah, Reagan just got a second term. And he's not gonna have any lasting impact. Think how much has improved in the last 20 years and then 20 more years, who knows? Ah, such an optimist. We'll never see a national leader who looks like either one of no us. No one thought that we'd have a Catholic president. And look what happened to him. Yeah. We'll see a black man in office before but we see a how Jew. How about a black president of the university? So, Dean is just the beginning? We'll see. Is checking up on me part of your official duties now? When you didn't call, I got worried. I... I'm fine. So is Jessica. I kept an eye on her over the summer. Thank you. I haven't seen her yet. Stop looking at me like that. Like what? Like I should have come home earlier. Or taking her with me, God forbid, to a war zone. You could have postponed the trip. I mean, at least until you were... What? Over it? You don't get over a loss like that. But the Civil War would be over, the displacements. Listen, you could have brought her home for her senior year. So at least the two of you could be together. Where was I supposed to send her? The public high school in town? Why not? You didn't send your girls there. They hate us in town. We just need more interaction with them. Always the peacemaker. You sound like a dean already. Listen, it'll be good. She's going to be here for college. I mean, for both of you. I didn't need her to do that. She could have gone anywhere. Teach a class. We'll catch up later. And I'm here if you need anything. Come for dinner Friday. Bring Bridget. I'm, I'll be settled in by then. Uh, uh, I can't Friday. I'm hosting a dinner for the international students. We have international students now. Not as many as I'd like, but I am working on it. You'll miss my rugelach. <laughs> I miss Jerugel all year. I can wait another week. Look, it's 110. Start your class. Uh, you should all be aware. This man, your new dean? Uh, they met me during orientation. This is a great man. This man and I stood arm in arm, even when they turned on the water hoses. And the dogs. And that wasn't the worst of it. We never let go. I wouldn't be here without this man. You're welcome. Look, have a good class, everyone. Oh, oh pardon me. I didn't want to be late. Then start out earlier next time. <laughs> good afternoon. I am Professor Hoffman. Welcome to Ethics and Hard Choices for Fresh <laughs> First Years. We begin with a case study about a little French village called Le Chambon where they hid thousands of Jews during the war. They hid me. I was a child, alone, when I got there. And I was nothing like them, Jewish, German. And still, they saved us, quietly, in full view of the Vichy government with a division of Nazi SS stationed nearby. Why? Why did these poor French villagers put themselves and their loved ones at such risk for strangers? Look at the person sitting next to you. Go ahead. Uh, uh, you don't need to write this down. Just look. Would you risk everything for this stranger? We all have our tribes. And we all have those we think of as other. The line between our own and other can be difficult to cross. The purpose of this class, the purpose of life, in my opinion, is the blurring of that line. The people of Le Chambon blurred that line, and I am alive because of it. How do you define other? That is the subject of your first essay. Do at the start of our next class in two days. <coughs> two days? If you aren't ready to write an essay after the first day of class, 
You should go take ethics with someone else. I hear Miss Fredericks assigns less writing, but more tests. Your choice. Everything is. So, you staying? Yeah. Good. At every class, one of you will present their paper and lead the discussion. Who wishes to go first in two days? Ah, we have a brave soul. You are? Angela Carter, sir. Well, thank you for your courage, Miss Carter. There's a difference between how we define other and how it's defined for us. Go on. If I walk two blocks from my building at home, they're speaking another language. And that's a dividing line for you? It's a red line for me, one I didn't make. A highway slices right through my borough. You can't cross it to blur some imaginary line. Even here, this campus has gates all around the perimeter. What's that for? Is this a gated community? If you live what, like that, why would you ever reach outside? Gates keep the other out, whoever that is, but they trap people inside too. And the longer they stay inside, the more out of touch they get. It's not enough to open the gate, let a few trickle in or out. The only way to do what you say, really blur the lines, is to take the gates down completely. I appreciate your passion, Miss Carter, but don't forget to breathe. Yeah, save something for next. Uh, uh Mr. Uh, Mitchell, sir. Mr. Mitchell, I prefer she speak her piece. By next time, she may have come up with solutions. I look forward to your class, Miss Carter. The other as you define it, and redefine it. That is what we do every time we come in contact with another human being. Here you are. Come inside and mingle. My wife's gonna think you don't like her deviled eggs. To be honest, I'm not an admirer of deviled eggs. Me neither. Come inside. I'll introduce you to the other international students. Thank you for the offer. I, I've met a few. You don't really expect me to take that for an answer, do you? I wasn't trying to be rude. I just, it isn't them. I, I don't know. Homesick? I didn't expect it. The stars here are backwards. <laughs> We have students from as far away as Nigeria, Ukraine, Korea. I imagine that many of them feel the same way that you do. So just come say hello. I just don't wish to waste their time. I don't understand. If I don't stay. Try the bruschetta, you'll stay. Here at university, I mean, it's indulgent. I mean, that depends on what you do with what you learn. My brother and his friends, they, they were arrested at home in South Africa, for speaking out. Danny, my brother, is in hospital. I just is found out. Is he all right? It, he, they say he will be, but I'm thousands of miles away. I, I thought I, I should have been there. So that you could be arrested too. You know, I read your profile, Isaac. <clears throat> you write very powerfully about apartheid. Writing isn't enough. Depends on what you write. You mentioned your uncle in your application. You've heard of him. Oh, Harry Schwartz is quite famous in some circles, a hero. We followed his battles for years, uh, Philip and I, Professor Hoffman. They escaped Germany around the same time, and your uncle took his fight to Johannesburg instead of Birmingham. Now he only fights in court, and it goes nowhere. Nothing will change unless we force it to change. I remember that feeling. At home, I'm more white than some and less than others. My brother, he didn't bring his identification when he went to the protest. They didn't know who he was or that he was Jewish. When they picked him up, he was hurt and he looked white, so they took him to the hospital. But that isn't where they took our friends. They couldn't hide their identities. They were no more violent and no less hurt, but they were in prison. And me, I'm standing here in your American backyard. For now, listen, I've been your other friends, Isaac. I know what it means to be left alone, lying on the floor of a cell with no sense of time or if help is ever coming. I've sat at counters and let <coughs> loudmouths put their cigarettes out on my arm. You don't have to explain it to me, but you have a chance here to use peaceful action. The right words at the right time can be powerful weapons. That, that's what I thought, but now they've shut down the newspapers, the radio, television coverage. They don't want the world to know about the unrest in the townships or what they're doing to stop it. No one has shut down the press here. There are three different student newspapers right on campus. The Phoenix in particular is known for its editorials. At least come inside. You aren't flying back to South Africa tonight. There's a history of, in my family, Jews and blacks standing together. 
being arrested together, I, I didn't know that I would also find that here. No, Philip and I met working for SNCC. He invited me to my first Passover Seder. I was shocked when this table of Holocaust survivors started singing a slave spiritual. Go down, Moses. You know it. Uh, of course, Jews were also slaves. <clears throat> strangers in a strange land. Here, there are no strangers. Dean Becker, what is bruschetta? <laughs> Oh, Miss Carter, I'm glad you stopped by. I could use your advice. That's what office hours are for. Mm -hmm. But I wouldn't say you needed much help at all. Your second paper was very impressive. You already read it? I just finished it. I, it didn't need to be ten pages. But, but once I got started, I didn't want to leave anything out. I had no idea that asthma rates were 20 times higher in the Bronx than in wealthier parts of the city. Thank you for educating me about that. 21 times higher. And that's just compared to other boroughs. Cross an imaginary line into the Westchester suburbs and the discrepancy's even bigger. It's economics, money, and power. That has to change. That's why you're here. I'm glad to hear you say that. Not everyone here is as open-minded as you are. This campus is extremely open -minded. They think they are. They? I suggested a speaker to the Black Student Union. He's not a perfect prophet, but who is? My brother took me to hear him speak. It was packed. I was just a kid, but I could never forget what it felt like. He was so tough, honest, spiritual. My brother was holding me up so I could see, and he noticed me from the stage in my starched jumper. He pointed me out and he said, look at her, she is the future. And I knew right then that I could change anything I wanted to change if I just stayed true to myself instead of letting other people, white people, define me. But there's been disagreement even within the Black Student Union. And who is this imperfect prophet? The Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan. Some people actually think he's a dangerous choice. I wouldn't call him a safe one. Because of the way he talks about Jews? Yes. Among other things. He makes some points, though, don't you think? That village where they hit you. Le Chambon. You think they would have done that if you hadn't looked like them? You said it yourself. The more different we are, the harder it is to blur that line. I think it's a question worth asking, and so would Minister Farrakhan. But that doesn't make him dangerous, uncomfortable. Sure, but that's what we need so we don't get complacent. You don't sound like you're looking for my advice at all. Oh, I am, I am. I just, I've, I've only been here a few weeks, and I want to make sure I'm not overstepping. He's controversial. That's supposed to be okay here, but is it? This is not some fragile Weimar regime. This campus can stand a little turmoil. I knew you would understand. How can we blur the lines if we don't listen to the opposition face what makes us squirm? I could have stayed in New York, gone to City College, lived at home. My grandmother begged me to. I think she was afraid that if I left, I wouldn't come back. No one in my family ever went away to school before. But I never stopped thinking about the way I felt in that room with him. Like there were no limits. You made the right choice coming here. Now go rock the boat. Office hours have ended. Thank you, sir. I'll see you tomorrow. Office hours are over. Not for another 45 seconds. People who are habitually late are passive-aggressively exhibiting that they just don't care. Oh, you learned that in your psych class? No, in my respect class. Mm. <clears throat> I haven't gone anywhere. Oh. I, sorry to squeak in under the wire. I really need to speak with you. Oh, it's so important, Mr. Mitchell. So I wanted to talk to you before you graded my second paper. I haven't looked at it yet. I, I don't know how to say this in a modest Try. Way. I don't get D's. D plus. Okay, I, I don't generally get B's. You don't get B's? You're in college now. Normally, I wouldn't grade grub. I've never had to, but I'm already part of the student assembly, and I, I want to run for office, but there's a grade cutoff. So if there's any way you could... Did you do the reading? I remember this paper. I saw no evidence of that it. That would take a lot of nerve asking for a higher grade if I hadn't read the material, sir. 
Is that what you're asking for, a higher grade? So you're doubting my judgment of what no, you're no, no, worth? No, I, I, I didn't mean that. I, I just want to make it better. I will allow you to write the paper again, not a rewrite, an entirely new paper with new ideas. But we already have another one due tomorrow. Or you can keep the D+. Plus. Will that satisfy you? Yes, yes, that would be fine. Thank you. We are finished now, Mr. Mitchell. Pull the door shut completely on your way out, please. Oh, of course. Don't bother. He'll make you write a whole new paper. He's intractable. I know. Oh, you've had him before? What'd you well, end up with grade-wise? Oh, that, <laughs> that's so rude of me, like asking how much your parents make. Forget the question. Should have introduced myself. Uh, Terrence, Terry, I uh, live in Butterfield, and I think I've seen you around. Jessica. Jessica, hey. Uh, do you drink coffee, Jessica? Tea, mostly. Sophisticated. Can I take you to tea? He isn't gonna raise your grade anyways, even with those pretty green eyes. Thank you, but I really need to talk to him. Mr. Hoffman, how about later tonight, if you're free? Free? Yeah, I can absolutely be free. Where do I pick you up? I'll come to you. You said Butterfield, right? Yeah. Eight-ish? That's perfect. Uh, here, this is a code. It'll get you into the dorm. See you tonight. Yes, yes you will. Ah, oh, there you are! I told you I didn't have much time between office hours and... That's my... why I brought you a sandwich, pastrami. That was very thoughtful. You know, you don't need to take care of me. Says you. I've survived much worse things than the start of the semester. Uh, I did not stop worrying about you the entire time you were away. I'm back. Nothing terrible happened. Why is everyone so worried about me? You and Albert both. You spent too much time imagining the I worst. I don't have to imagine it. I'm the picture of hell. So was she. Thank you for the pastrami. I'm sure it'll keep me very healthy. Nothing for you? I'm not hungry. You haven't eaten since I got home. That is You're the true. one who's living on air. It's terrible, I know. There's children starving in Everywhere. India. There are children starving everywhere. Have half the sandwich. It's more than I, I can... I don't eat pastrami. I was trying Since to... when, don't you... <laughs> Dad, I haven't eaten me in over a year. I was making a brisket tonight. That's why you think I don't eat. It's fine. It's fine. I won't be home for dinner anyways. I can make something else. I have plans. With who? I'll grab a bite on campus. Oh, uh, who do you have plans with? Have them come to the house so Maybe I can... Maybe once I know them better, I will... You don't know them? <laughs> now you're worried? You didn't meet any of the friends when I was at boarding school. I knew you were safe. Sure. Just because you were safe when your parents sent you away... I wasn't you... safe. I was alive. Forget it. Forget it. When there's someone I want you to meet, you'll meet them. I'll let you get ready for class. When did you become so adult? <laughs> oh, how am I ever supposed to lead a class if I don't understand the material? Is money ethical? I don't know. And I read the chapter twice. Money is a construct. What does that even mean? Money isn't real. It's only as valuable as we decide it is, as a society. Though not everybody gets to be a part of that decision. I'm tired of waiting. Let's start without them. I could use the help. It's better when it's just us. It makes me nervous that you're all so smart. You're smart, Katie. I'm a good student. It's not the same thing. I'm not afraid to work hard. That's what the guidance counselor said in my recommendation. And I've always been really good at memorizing, but now we're supposed to think for ourselves, question everything. It's like I landed in a different universe. I'm up for it, though. I'm, I'm ready to examine my preconceptions. That's good to hear. I just, I don't want you to think I'm sheltered or anything. Why would I think that? What you said on the first day, I, I can't get it out of my head about gated communities. Oh, it was a metaphor. I live in a gated community. <laughs> At home. But, but that doesn't mean the town isn't diverse. In my high school, there was even a boy from Yugoslavia. His name started with a Z. But everybody kept to their own, you know? Kids from different neighborhoods, they all sat at their own lunch tables. The Spitty Hill kids took a bus back and forth, so they weren't even on the same schedule as the rest of us. I wanted to talk to the people at those other tables. So why didn't you? I guess I didn't think they wanted to talk to me. Spinny Hill is code, right? I don't You understand. ever had a black friend before? That's not, I mean, obviously. <laughs> I've never had a white friend. Not a real one. Maybe you'll be my first. Yes. Please. Teachers, sure, who took a special interest in me. 
They thought they saw something, that's what they'd say, as if being able to see it made them special. I bet the teachers loved you. They still do, right? Even here, you stand out. I just want to pass. We'll study together. Don't worry, you'll more than pass. Thanks. You know, you're not the only one who feels like they've landed in a different universe, like the ground isn't solid. You've got to figure out where it's okay to step. Maybe we can figure it out together. Deal. <laughs> when I was younger, I went to sleepaway camp upstate with the campfire girls all by myself. I was the only one from my neighborhood. My mom was always finding ways to get me out of the city, even if it was just for a couple weeks. I didn't make any friends, but I learned a lot. There was this really old cabin where we changed before swimming. It took me a while to work up the courage, but I forced myself to look at them, the white girls, to see if they looked the same as me underneath. Underneath? They're close. Oh! Naked. Oh, we do, right? <laughs> Basically. <laughs> okay, I'm so glad. So is he. <laughs> You that I never would have had the nerve. <laughs> what did I miss? Earth shaking girl talk that will never repeat to you. Oh, oh, maybe I should step back outside so you two can get back on with your uh, studying. You're already late. You can stay, but only if you're serious about this next paper. I intend to write something worth reading. I didn't come here to fool around. You're lost. Or waste other people's time. Or hear other people's viewpoints. Nice job, by the way, taking up the entire class with that magnum opus. Way to make everyone else look He bad. didn't give a maximum page yeah, length. But so we I only had two days to work on it. You've only been thinking about what it means to be other for the last two days? You know, your next paper should be on how to win friends and influence people. Be less than a paragraph. Ignore him until he's ready to make an actual contribution. I'm so confused. If money isn't real, how can it be the root of all problems? It's not about the cash. It's about what it gets you. Access, power. You were listening. My dad's paying my tuition so he gets to decide what I major in. Exactly. Your dad has the power. I usually do. Or at least what I don't major in. No theater, no music. Nobody decides what I major in but me. That's the beauty of financial aid. You got a full ride? It's not like a scholarship. It's because she's... What? Urban. What am I? <laughs> Go to hell. <laughs> you're saying you're not? Where are you from if you're not embarrassed? South or... Bronx. I'm not embarrassed. I'm proud. Manita Street. You wear it well. You don't know anything about it. I saw Ford Apache. That was a movie. So they didn't film it on location? Those burnt out buildings look pretty real. Those buildings were destroyed by their landlords for insurance money. So they are real then? My block has a community garden, a neighborhood watch, and yeah, a couple of burnt out buildings that the city won't touch, but they will. Upper East Side, right? <laughs> I'm not even from New York. New Jersey. Uh, okay, sure. Prep school. L look, I'm not who you think I am. Neither am I. And I have a merit scholarship too. All summer, my dad complained about paying an arm and a leg for a liberal arts education. It wouldn't be worth it for networking or salary potential. I think money is the root problem. It is if you don't have any. There's nothing wrong with wanting to be rich. That's the American dream. Capitalist dream. Do you know how many people live below the poverty line? You a communist? You a Reaganist? <laughs> okay. Okay, Manita Boulevard. We got off on the wrong foot. Sorry I called you a communist. We're not so different. My dad's from Harlem originally. No one's originally from Harlem. You're cute, you know that? The harder you try not to be, the cuter you are. Apologies, I, I couldn't leave the newspaper meeting early. They were signing editorials. Terry just got here anyway. You didn't miss a thing. Where do you think I was? At the beach? I had a meeting too. Student assembly. Am I supposed to be impressed? Yes. The student assembly is just a youth wing of the administration. I was late because the meeting ran long. There was a pretty vigorous debate over a speaker that the Black Student Union wants to invite. Seems like you had something to do with the choice. Minister Farrakhan is a scholar, a leader, a man of faith. And a racist. A black racist. Who? The Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan. He lectures at colleges, and it was my idea to invite him. I've never heard of him. You're not black. Or Jewish. I thought you were South African. Also Jewish. You'd know who he was if you were. You don't approve? I hear enough of him. Whites like him at home. Who is he? 
Minister Farrakhan is a preacher, a community organizer. He leads the Nation of Islam. He helps educate inmates and reintroduce them to society. He speaks his mind and he's not afraid to be controversial. He definitely is not. He's a leader who rose up from within the community. That's what you need in South Africa. We have those leaders. They're in jail. You really want to invite him here after all the things he said about Hitler being a great man? Wait a minute, what did he say? That was taken out of context. No. But even if he were anti-Semitic, that doesn't mean he isn't a force for the black community. He was responsible for the assassination of Malcolm X. Some force for the black community. That was never proven and- Oh, 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 oh so you're just gonna cherry pick the things you like about him and pretend the rest- I'm not pretending anything. Minister Farrakhan Khan is a warrior against the status quo. You quote Nathan that? No, but he'd agree. At least I can vote against funding the lecture. The student assembly controls the campus events budget. Talk about money and power. But he has a right to speak and we have a right to hear him. And I have a right not to have my student events money funding his lecture. I put into that fund. We all did. She didn't. That's not fair. So the man doesn't have a right to speak on my Your dime. Your parents dime you mean. Who cares who pays for it? If he's that offensive, why do we want him here at all? Katie, you want to be sheltered your whole life? <clears throat> if you only listen to the words of people you already know you agree with, you may as well lock yourself behind those gates. You just want to make a statement. Flip off the administration so you can look back on this in 10 years when you're working at a bank and talk about how radical you were. I would never work at a bank. Sorry, <laughs> Sorry am I early? Oh, hey, not at all. <laughs> if you're still working... I'm always working, but I'll make an exception for you. How'd you get in here? I gave her the code. You're not supposed to share the code with the Does other she dorms. she look dangerous and... to you? I can sit if you are not finished. Finished? We haven't even started. That's right. I'm in Hoffman's Tuesday to Thursday section. Do you mind? Mine aren't the best notes. Are you kidding? You write down every single word. Increasing human connection. We're not up to that part yet. He keeps going on about Le Chobon. Mm. In our section two. Mm. Look, you don't need Hoffman. I've got your human connection right here. Wait, I want to hear what she thinks. Oh, that's a shock. Before you two go blurring your lines or whatever you're planning. He's to asking what the root is of connection, saving each other, but he never mentions love. Maybe that's too simple. But that's my thesis for my paper next week. Not too simple at all. Let's get out of here. I want to hear more about that. Uh... Aren't you presenting your paper tomorrow? Yeah, so? Have you written it yet? I, I already know what I'm going to say. What's it on? You'll find out tomorrow. Maybe you can read him the chapter. <laughs> I read the chapter. If you have a paper to work I've on. got it under control. Your funeral. <laughs> you wish. Let's go. See you guys around. That only happened because I said no. What did you say? Does it matter? <laughs> now we can focus. Please. I'm going to argue that money can be a tool for justice. How? Money isn't ethical or unethical, but what you do with it is. Just like rich people, rich countries can use our wealth in an ethical way. <coughs> I'm going to argue that if America withholds her investments in South Africa, money can be a lever for change. Hoffman is going to love you. I wish I had something like that to write about. Stop funding racist economies. Invest in fair ones. Sounds like Minister Farrakhan. I think you should come hear him speak. You believe in free speech, don't you? Up to a point. We're not so different. I came a long way, too, to change things back home. We haven't come as far as we think. What does that mean? There's a branch of the Ku Klux Klan in the next town. What? Less than 10 miles from campus. It's going to be the subject of my first editorial. Could be worse. At home, they don't have to wear hoods. Why didn't we know about that? They don't advertise it in the school brochures. I know what I'm going to do. I know what I'm going to do about Farrakhan. Do you want to know? I... Sure. What are you going to do, Katie? I'm going to go to the library. I'm going to go through all the microfiche and read every article and speech he's ever given. I want to be as well informed as I can be before I make a decision. I'll get all the facts and I won't be swayed by any impressive speakers or let anyone make up my mind for me. That's good, right? Sure, that's really good. You're not going to try to convince me to go? I'm not going to convince anyone to go. The student assembly needs to see that this is not some fragile post-war republic. We learn from controversy, from hearing all viewpoints. You certain about that? You don't have to agree with everything you hear. You shouldn't. But you can't listen to someone who's been silenced. 
We have to be open to engaging in the dialectic. That one is right out of Hoffman's book. I don't remember hearing that. Uh, it's optional reading. When do you guys have time for optional reading? <laughs> <laughs> so, boy, I'm confused. I thought you took ethics already. When the... What do you mean? Well, back there you said you were in Hoffman's other section, but this afternoon I thought you were a sophomore. Really? You thought you were asking a sophomore about to tea? I was pretty impressed with myself. Well, if you rather date an older uh, no, 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 no. I mean, I just assumed. Uh, I've never taken ethics already, but everybody knows Mr. Hoffman's reputation. He deserves it. He's pretty tough on you, huh? He plays favorites, you know, highly unethical if you ask me. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter, though. You're right. He's not the one I'm trying to impress. How am I doing so far? So far, so good. <laughs> you sure you can tell good from bad? We've only had a few weeks of ethics, and I don't think we're on that lesson yet. I have empirical evidence. My pulse is up, my face is warm, my breathing well, is... I like dating a pre-med. Are we dating already? That's up to you. Uh, wait, hey, yeah, uh, who are you? M what do you mean? Like, I don't even know your last name. My, uh, t well, I'm not a pre-med, that's for one thing. Okay, I, but you're taking all those science classes, they don't even make I, you take. I mean, maybe I will get an MD or a PhD, but only if it makes sense on my research. Show off? I didn't mean to, I just like labs. I worked on them all summer. They're peaceful, they're precise, you get the answers you want. I wouldn't want to be a doctor. I'm done with doctors. One thing you should know about me, Terry, is if you really want to know something about me is I lost my mom about a year ago. Oh, I'm so sorry. Yeah, she was sick for so long. They sent me to boarding school so I wouldn't have to see, so I could pretend things were normal that were not normal. That's heavy. I don't know what I'd do if... Is your dad still around? Yeah, yeah, he's in and out of town. He won't even talk about her. It shouldn't surprise me, he's never been engaged. Mine is too engaged, and he's never satisfied. <laughs> Gotta work twice as hard, be twice as good. It's like his mantra. You know, I thought once I got away, got into school, a really good school, he'd be happy. But nothing's ever good enough. My mom, though, well, she kind of treats me like a prince. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds Jewish. Oh, are, are you? Yeah. <laughs> Uh, I couldn't tell. Uh, I, I try to keep my horns filed down, but sometimes they would poke through my hair. What? D forget it. <laughs> forget it. I'm mostly non-observant, but we have Shabbos? Sabbath. Oh. Uh, dinner, at least on Friday night before, but that's it. Culturally, though, it doesn't wear off. So, you don't care that I'm not... I'm not Jewish? <laughs> Come on, on a cellular level, we're like 99% identical. Well, at Collegiate, my prep school, I don't think there were any Jews there. <laughs> they just don't advertise it. And there were maybe like three black kids total. If you count the Bentley twins as one kid, their mom was white. My mom was agnostic, born Jewish though. This lecture, Farrakhan, you think any of the Jewish students would go? I don't speak for Jewish no, students. No, 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 I, I, didn't, mean, I didn't mean like I'd that. Probably, why not? <sighs> would you? I don't know, I'm not very political. Drives my dad crazy, so I doubt it. He'd have a whole lot to say about us, Farrakhan. You and me? What would he I'm, say? I'm not gonna repeat it, it's offensive. Because I'm Jewish or because I'm white? Both, whatever, it's not, that's not how I feel. How do you feel? Like, I don't want us on the opposite sides. We're not, we're not. I don't care what anybody else thinks. I do what I want and right now, I wanna get to know you better. So, this is cool then. Why us. wouldn't it be? Thank you, Mr. Mitchell, for doing the reading. Uh, you're welcome. That's all your paper has shown me, that you've done the reading. But you said you wanted me to... How does the reading relate to your struggle? I'm 18 years old. I haven't struggled. What are you waiting for? <laughs> Age can give you perspective, but youth, if you don't struggle now, you need to look deeper next time. Sit down. We have a few minutes left. Anyone else care to present? Ah, Miss Linden. I, I did some research I wanted to share. Go on. I thought, with the vote happening soon, instead of just hearing about him, it would be good to hear Minister Farrakhan's actual words. Proceed, please. The Jews don't like Farrakhan. He likes to talk about himself in the third person. 
so they call me Hitler. Well, that's a good name. Hitler was a very great man. That's enough right there. We don't need to hear anything else that comes out of here. He said that to get attention. And don't you forget, when it's God who puts you in the ovens, it's forever. Oh, he's got our attention. He said a lot of inspiring things, too. She's right. I was looking for the most controversial quotes. Does it get worse? Matter. What are you so afraid you'll hear? Any time a black man stands up with justice in his mouth, his life is on the line. I've seen that in action. We know that blacks and Jews have had a good relationship in the past. You're a suffering people, and so are we. But, my dear Jewish friends, everything comes of age. We cannot define our self-interest in terms of your self-interest. I wasn't sure if I should read that one. That's the one you're afraid to read? Yeah. <laughs> that doesn't offend me. It's his truth. And we should hear him out. If you choose to. I don't. At least here there is a choice. Is there? I have to listen to the opinions of racists and sexists every day. It's practically white noise don't at this point. Don't go there. Relax. It's a phrase. Relax. Let, never let it become white noise. So normal that you don't hear it anymore. If it offends you, you're awake to it. Our neighbors told my parents they were ridiculous alarmists sending me away. No. I'm alive because they were awake. At least one of us got out. So it's good to be offended? It isn't enough. I detest many things, Mr. Farrakhan says, but his anger is legitimate, even if it's misdirected. I'm not afraid to listen to him, because, like me, he's an outsider. Now, if those words came from someone in power, the president, praising Hitler, then, Miss Linden, there would be no time for a trip to the library. Never again. But how do you know? How do you know if there's time when you're in the middle of it? You don't. That is what we call living. Professor Hoffman, if the lecture gets funded, will you go? I disapprove of what you say, but I will defend to the death your right to say it. Of course he'd go. But does the right to free speech equal the right to hate speech? From racists? From the Klan? Even the Klan has the right to assemble and the right to march peacefully through public streets. We're out of time for today. I'll see you all next week. I think I missed something you were saying before. You said the advantage of age is perspective. What did you say was the advantage of youth? You want just one? <laughs> <laughs> There can be no peace without justice. There can be no justice without truth. And there can be no truth unless someone rises up and speaks the truth. Is that Farrakhan too? You missed that one. Who's that? Angela Carter. She's a special one. That's Angela Carter. Yeah, I remember her application. I pushed through her aid package. <clears throat> I see something in her that I haven't seen it She's willing to ask the hard questions. It was her idea to invite Farrakhan. They want me to take a side on the election. Why? Why do you think? They want me to announce my opinion publicly before the vote. Have they told you what to say? I know what they want me to say. I'll tell you what I tell my students. No choice is wrong, as long as it's well informed. I don't have that kind of freedom. Of course you I haven't you had that kind of freedom since we came here. Albert. It was my choice. I could keep dragging Bridget and the babies from protests to sit in, keep coming home banged up and bruised if I came home at all. Instead of spending the night in jail, I could let her tend to every black eye, every cigarette burn. But we just bowed our heads and took it. I remember. Or I could raise my family in safety. It was selfish. There's nothing selfish about that. You make a difference here. What? And you're the best father I know. You made different choices. I followed you here, didn't I? You introduced me to my wife. But you don't play it safe. You still travel, advocate. You pour everything you've got into churning out a new generation of firebrands. You could do all those things. You said it yourself. I can't afford a misstep. Where do you stand on this lecture, He wouldn't have been my choice. But it stirred up a lot of emotion, questions, debate. 
Isn't that why we're here? If you know what they want you to say, Albert, and you don't agree, you shouldn't say it. Don't let them use you. Refuse. I agree with what they want. Then there's no problem. He's divisive. Completely counter to the philosophy of this campus. But I know what Farrakhan means to kids like her. Do I take that away? He sees the damage, the poverty, the police raids, the hunger for dignity. And he speaks to all of it. While I managed to get a scholarship approved for maybe what one student, maybe not. Don't get me wrong. I think bringing him here is a terrible idea. But if I come out and say that publicly, as the face of the administration, what does that make? Nice speech, Manida Boulevard. Stop calling me that. It's Manida Street. I guess I shouldn't be surprised you'd manage to put your two cents in before we vote. Not that it's going to change anything. We'll see. Are those hickeys all over your neck? <laughs> Probably should have worn a tie. You don't think I see what you're doing, laying the groundwork. I don't know what you're talking about. And she'll look perfect on your arm, broaden your political appeal. You lost me. You gotta be able to cross over in politics if you're really gonna climb. I don't need to cross anything. You do want to hold office, don't you? The senator from New Jersey. That's a start. How far will you go? Be careful. Not everybody is going to like your choices. You don't need to, you don't get a vote on my choices. But I'm about to vote on yours. Democracy in action. It's not just money, you know. Votes are also power. I feel sorry for you, Terry. <laughs> Minister Farrakhan isn't working for your approval or acceptance or even your vote. He's just working for you. And you can't see how much there is to work against. This isn't Johannesburg. The Klan is right next door. Is that supposed to influence how I vote? It doesn't influence how you live. That's why we need his voice too. Excuse me, everyone. Uh, I <laughs> see we have a larger turnout than usual. If you'll allow me, I'd like to take a few moments before the voting begins. I'm faculty advisor, but this is your organization, your student assembly. Still, many of you know that I'm a veteran of the civil rights movement. And we were working to lift up a particular people, but not at the expense of another. We didn't stand for division. We were building bridges. I was born in Michigan. Went to college there, had never been farther south than Washington, D.C. When I joined the Student Nonviolent Coordinating Committee, I had almost nothing in common with those Mississippi sharecroppers we were registering to vote, and almost nothing in common with the man I worked alongside, the man who has become my closest friend, a Jewish refugee from World War II, Bridges. We walked dusty roads together from house to weather-beaten old house, trying to convince people to go to the court and sign their names to a voting roll. Even though that meant they could lose their jobs, their homes, or worse. But we were allies, marching together, kneeling together. And when police on horseback swung their batons at us and water hoses knocked us to the ground, we lived in fear together. When Goodman and Cheney and Schwerner went missing, fear that mounted every day until they were found dead, they looked just like us. They could have been us. Bridges. And that's the legacy of this school, with its long Quaker history of peaceful resistance to inequality, a legacy of bridges, a legacy that you are now part of. Mr. Farrakhan, has many empowering and uplifting things to say. But he's not part of that legacy. If he divides allies from each other, if he calls Hitler a great leader, if he tears us apart, he isn't the voice we need. And you can show that with your vote, a vote against division, against hate, if you vote against funding this lecture. Thank you. Whose side are you on? Angela. Let go of me. I'm not here with you. I'm not on anyone's side. Why not? 
Just because you've made accommodations doesn't mean the rest of us have to. No one is asking you to agree with everything Minister Farrakhan says or even go hear him. But you know that without student assembly funding, we can't afford to bring him to campus. No one will hear him. I'm sorry, Dean Don't Becker. apologize for me. I don't intend to apologize for you. Either one of you, if this really is our student assembly and not just a bunch of puppets for the administration, they'll all see that speech for what it was. Which was what? The voice of hypocrisy. You know what will happen without funding? There won't be any lecture. You're trying to suppress our right to hear what he has to say. How is that any different from suppressing our votes? I would never suppress anyone's votes. Who I does it that. hurt to let the people who want to hear him hear him? Or is it just about the money? I can't pay to bring him here, so I don't have the power to heal him. That's your democracy in action. What are you so afraid of? That he'll say something that calls your choices into question? Or that he'll open your eyes? Whatever happens right now, you don't need to support Minister Farrakhan. You don't even have to hear him speak. This vote is about access, and who has it? You can vote to fund this lecture and still not go to it, protest it even, but if you vote against funding it, no one can go. Access denied. Is that the kind of campus this is? Is that the side you want to be on? Make sure you're comfortable with your choice. I packed water and sandwiches and a blanket. It's a and protest, a not a picnic. I still can't believe this lecture is actually happening. The vote wasn't even close. It was a fair vote, though. I wish I had my walkie-talkies here at school in case we get separated. That won't happen, will it? Hard to know what will happen. Don't scare her. Terry! Hey! Hey! I thought you were in lab all afternoon. You don't get to decide what I do. Uh, come we're... with us! No, 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 she's not coming. I need to go. They can't get started without me. Well, I, uh, okay, I'll, I'll catch up with you guys. Just go ahead. Wait! What, what are you doing here? Why do I have to stay in the lab while you get to show your opposition? You said you didn't care about this. Maybe I should. Uh, but I thought you weren't political. I mean, I'm not, but I, I didn't think I was, but this I... This is important, Jessica. But doesn't us being together say something? That's important, too. I want to go to the protest with you, Terry. I thought, I thought we settled this, right? You were gonna stay in the lab where you're safe? That's and very sweet, but I've been thinking about this for days, weeks, really. Ever since the vote, I don't wanna hide in the lab. I want to be there with you. Why? Because I don't know what I would do if something happened to you. No, hey, nothing's gonna happen you to you. You don't know that. Don't send me away. I'm not, I just, I just, I didn't think it mattered to you. It matters. We're together, aren't we? We are. Then, whatever happens, I'm here. I'm not going to abandon you. Oh, okay, if that's what you want. That's what I want. When Israel was in Egypt land, let my people go. Oppressed so hard they could not stand. Let my people go. Go down, Moses, way down in Egypt land. Tell Pharaoh, let my people go. Go down, Moses, way down in Egypt land. Tell Pharaoh, let my people go. The song, Go Down, Moses, was written by African slaves. As they toiled in the fields, they sang about Hebrew slaves laboring under Pharaoh's whip to build his cities before Moses led them out of Egypt. American Jews sing it on Passover to honor this connection. Isaac Schwartz sings it in South Africa, where his family ran to escape the Nazis and where they fight to end the apartheid state. I honor this connection. The lecture inside is about to begin, and its speaker has used words of hate and division in his attempt to raise up my people. But we assembled here outside. Today, we choose connection instead. Please join me now in silence. What the? 
Oh no! Is that the KKK? Why do their sides say we're what, with them? What are, are they doing? Them? Are we on the same side? Of course of not. What are they but doing on the I field? Can't stay here. My parents are going to kill me. We should leave. We Jess, need to go somewhere Jess, you gotta go. This is going to be safe to home. Go to you. No, I can't leave them, Jess. You gotta go right now. I'm not going anywhere without you. Okay, okay. Then we stay here together, okay? What do they even want? To get inside the lecture hall. But they're not going to. You think that we stand together with you? Never! Come on, everybody, link arms. Everyone, don't let go and stay with me. Thus spoke the Lord, bold Moses said, Let my, my people, people go. go. If not, I'll smite your firstborn dead. Let my people go. Go down, Moses. Way down in Egypt land. Tell old Pharaoh, let my people go. No one here will ever lie down for you. Never again! What am I doing here? Go if you don't think it's your fight. Ah! Petey! Jessica! Jessica! Oh my god, I can't even... What the hell? Please come here. Oh my god, that was the scariest thing that's ever happened to me. And I've had appendicitis. We're okay, it's over. Is it over? They're in the next town. They're like so in a lot of towns. Uh, let's get out of here. Let's get off campus, away from yes, all this craziness, yes. and uh, just away from everything. I love you, Terry. What? I love you. I love you too. I feel it's the only reason for any of this. Here you are. Looks like you got away without a scrape. Yeah. How about you? My knuckles are bleeding, but the rest of me is fine. I'm glad you're. All right. I'm more than all right. That was completely insane. That's not how I would describe it. Let's go. You're right. Let's get off this campus. How? There are police everywhere. The quad is cordoned off. They're sending people back to their dorms. I have a car. We're not prisoners. They can't keep us here. They could lock the gates. No, they wouldn't do that. There's no hiding from this anymore. I'm not. The fight has begun. I'm not hiding. Terry, please. Oh, yeah, OK. She's the one you should be coming at. Back so soon? They cut it short. You sound, disappointed. <coughs> you sound real disappointed. You should have stayed with us. We weren't disappointed. Never again. We, he brought the fight to them. Who? Dean Becker, and he has a right good hook. Dean Becker? He'd been in jail right now, wouldn't he have, you know, he was in your country? He wouldn't have been speaking in the first place, Becker or Farrakhan. Terry, please, I want to go. Yeah. Okay. There's nowhere to go. Someone tore off a clan member's hood. I, and I think it was one of the attendants from the gas station. In town? They're everywhere. We just didn't know it. This lecture, it turned over the rocks, lit the fuse, the press was there, the police otherwise, no one pays attention. Leaders rot in jail. Mandel has been in prison for 23 years. That's longer than we've been alive, but your Reagan calls him a terrorist. He's not my Reagan. Something had to be done to bring it out into the open, and you did it. I just wanted people to hear his message. There was a, a terrible moment when we were standing there right next to them, and Becker said we didn't agree with them, we weren't with them, but we were. For that instant, we were there to protest the same speaker, and that, that was the most frightening part. Before things erupted, we shared a viewpoint with the clan. You didn't share anything with them. You raised a fist in Minister Farrakhan's defense. But it was, it was the first time that song felt alive. I wasn't just hearing myself in it. I was answering a call. Where's Katie? Wasn't she with you? She should be back by now. Isaac? She wasn't prepared for a fight. Where is she? I don't know. I, they took her to the hospital. The hospital? She tripped. It happened Is so she fast. Hurt? I, I don't know. She may have been trampled. What trampled. are you saying? She wasn't the only one. Do you know which hospital? Did they take her to the one right in town? I'm not sure. I didn't mean for anything to happen to her. It's, it's just in the shadows here, the hatred. But it's here, and you exposed no it. No one was supposed to get hurt. It's the price we have to be willing no, to pay. No, that's not how it's... At least she's only in hospital, where they'll take care of her and not in a cell. I have to find out if she's all right. She's not all right. She didn't know what she was getting into. None of us did. But we do now. Our eyes are open. Thank you. Hey. I didn't mean to wake you up. I Angela? Just... Hi. Hi. 
How long have you been standing there? You okay? I, I, I know you're not okay. I, I just... You should see the other guy. <laughs> they put a pin in my elbow. I'm so sorry. You didn't break my arm. It's broken. I don't remember exactly, but... You weren't there, were you? No. You went to the lecture. That's right. Uh, how was it? A consoler of men. That's what he said black women needed to be. It's just another kind of box. Are the guys okay? Yeah. I was afraid maybe they were in the rooms in some other part of the hospital. They're fine. They weren't hurt. Good. There were some other kids here. They were in the ambulance with me, and one of them was really banged up. I am so sorry, Katie. I knew the KKK existed. I'm not that sheltered. I've seen pictures and textbooks, but I don't think I believed it. Not really. It's not the same in a book. You don't have to stand in the doorway. Uh, I didn't want to, uh, you were resting. I'm up now. Sorry. I've never heard you apologize so much, or ever, maybe. Sorry. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> it's boring here anyway. I'd much rather talk to you. You sure? They almost didn't let me in. I bet you talked your way through. Please. I'm lucky, you know. Yeah? Things got crazy. Fast. It could have been a lot worse. He saved me. Dean Becker. I don't know what would have... He put himself in front of me after I fell. I'm so glad. I looked up from the ground and I saw his back sheltering me. He fought them off. I, I want to be that brave someday. They say bones heal stronger if you break them when you're a kid. You think 18 is still a kid? I don't know. It was pretty bad break, though. Shattered my ulna. That's definitely not where I thought my ulna was. <laughs> but my parents want to come get me. I bet. I can't go back to class for a while. They're saying probably not till next semester, depending on how the next surgery goes, but I won't let them take me home. I said no to my dad. You believe that? To my dad. I mean, the dorm room's already paid for. Why shouldn't I stay? Money really is power, isn't it? They're coming on the weekend anyway, but it's just a visit. They can't make me go back with them. It's true what they say about college. You aren't the same after you go away. You okay? You're so quiet. I don't know. I just, I feel responsible. It's not your fault, Angela. Just because you invited him to come speak, you didn't know what would happen. I just wish I'd been there. I would have put myself between you and them. Yeah, no. You were where you were supposed to be. I just need to be braver next time. I will be. And you never know, maybe I'll protect you. <laughs> no, that'll never happen. You wouldn't need me. You wouldn't crumble. You'd face them head on. And I wouldn't crumble either if we were together. I never would have let go of your hand. <laughs> wait, 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 wait. Are you sure about this? Why would I want to be? It's been over a month. I, I know, I just, it seems fast. You're such a gentleman. Please don't make fun of me. No, I mean you are. If you're not ready, we could... No, no, I'm ready. I just, uh, I mean, think about how they're going to look at us when we check into the hotel. And, are uh, you embarrassed of me? No, no, that's not, I would never be embarrassed of you, Jessica. The whole diner can see us right now. You're the smartest, most beautiful, every good thing I ever imagined. Thank you. You know, I just don't want to ruin it, but I, I, I want to be honest with you about everything, especially if this is one Are you shaking? <laughs> Why is this so difficult? You're the first person I ever said I, I love you to other than relatives. Me too. Good, good, good. And you're the first person. I'm, I'm just going to say it. I, I haven't really dated as much as you might think <laughs> in high school. And I just promise you won't laugh at me. I promise. <laughs> I was shy around girls. I don't believe that. <laughs> I just, I never felt like I fit, you know? Like, I, I kept to myself mostly. And I made a decision to be different here, to be Terry, and not Terrence. To put myself out there, so this is, it's new to me. I mean, not everything, but just please tell me you have some sort of Am idea. Am I your first girlfriend? No! Okay. Yeah, I, 
<laughs> kind of, yeah, yeah, you it's are. It's okay, it's okay. You're my first everything. We're perfect for each other. Yeah. I should tell you something, too. <laughs> I'm not who you think I am, either. My father, he's a professor here. Who is he? Oh, no. No! <laughs> Shit! Terry! No, 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 no. You can't tell him anything Terry. about us, ever! <laughs> He thinks I'm like, oh, I, I don't even know. You're afraid of him, I get it. I get no, it. yeah, I am, I, but that's not, Jessica, you can't tell him ever. This is crazy. I don't know, it just, it happened so fast. I wanted to tell you, but the more serious we got. Jessica, I'm not just some random student, okay? He, he hates me. That's an exaggeration. No, from the first day, before he even knew my name. He just needs to get to know you, the real you. I've never felt like that in a classroom before, so, so small. If he saw us together, He'd give you another chance. He'd see how we feel. If he saw us together, he, he'd put you on the next bus. I, I made a mistake. Think. Oh, my God. Big one. I feel like an idiot. I am an idiot. Oh my I'm God. so sorry. But now you know the truth. It's not the worst thing, is it? He's going to fail me. He would never. That's, like, an ethical... I, I can't fail a class. You care about your grades than, more than me? You think your father is tough? You're not breaking up with me because of my father. You said you loved me. I don't even know you! You lied to me this whole time! About nothing important. I just lied whose daughter I was. You're pretending someone you're not. I haven't changed. Not who I am, or how I feel, or what I want. Everything all right over here? Yeah, it's fine. Definitely not. Uh, Jessica! He bothering you, miss? I'm not bothering anyone. You know where you are, son. I'm leaving. Wait, 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 Jess, please, don't... You stopping her from leaving? What? No. I Stop was talking students. now! To me, to her, I'll drive you home, miss. You don't want to be here with him after what happened. But sir, you don't understand. Uh, wait, She's... I don't understand? How many ways did you not understand when I told you to shut up? Officer, I, he's not dangerous. Put your hands on the table where I can see them. Oh we don't need another incident. Was or wasn't he bothering you? Jessica, please, for God's sake. I told you to keep your damn hands on the table. Oh my God, you hurt him. He's my friend. Oh. We weren't doing anything. Terry, please let me call my father. Your father knows you're out with this guy at this hour? Please, it's all my fault. I shouldn't have. Please let me go with my father. Do you know, do you have any idea what's been going on out there? Oh. Uh, please, please call Dean Becker, please. Dean, you go to the college? Yes. You part of what happened over there, both of you? We, we were not. My father's a professor. One, one call. I'll keep him company. Thank you for calling me. Everything should be all right. You're the optimist now. I did think we were past something like this in this day and age. Because it wouldn't happen to you. That's not fair. You didn't see that boy's head. You know I've seen way worse. He was sitting in a diner. I know. You don't. You don't have to explain this to me. We've been through this. Have we? Goodman and Schwerner were Jews. They ended up as dead as Jamie. The Klan didn't see any well, difference. they did mutilate Cheney before they decided. How many times were we arrested? And together? put in different cells. Well, they beat me again. And where were you when they were throwing me to the ground and twisting my hands behind my back? I was in another cell. With right a mattress and a toilet and a phone call. Albert. Where were you when I was sure that they were going to kill me because they told me they were going to kill me? And no one would ever know. You weren't there. You don't even know what that's like. I do. Maybe you did, but now, when you walk down the street, what do people see? What do the police see? You think they say to themselves, better get out my gun. Here comes a Jew. Better slam his head against the table. I don't recognize you. I couldn't even let myself hear what Farrakhan had to say. What was I afraid of? You weren't afraid. You were taking a stand. No. For the Jewish community? There's no such thing as a Jewish community. The black community. That's a it? load of crap. Nothing has changed. This is still what we live with. And what that poor kid is going to have to live with for the rest of his life. Thank God I don't have a son. Albert. It's not something that you deal with every day. Unless they make me wear an armband. It could never happen here. It could happen tomorrow. You don't think my parents sat me down and told me how to hold my head when I walked past the German officers, how to answer? But not here. 
When did the Jews become white? Just now. When all you had to do was say you knew she was out with him. And they dropped everything. Did you know that he and she, they were dating? No, no. So you lied for him. And I guess that we should thank you for that. Why are you so angry with me? They want me in the provost's office in the morning. I have to give an account of the riot. Why? Man, I should have led those students away. As soon as I saw them in those hoods, I just, I did everything the administration wanted me to do. I always do. But then they were standing there in front of me in the goddamn hoods, and I just, I snapped. I was 25 years old again. And then it all came flooding back. The police and the dogs and that first beating in Mississippi. It was like I had blood in my eyes again. From a club that hit me in the side of my head two decades ago. And I almost put my hands up over my face automatically. The way that they had taught us to take the beating and do nothing. They were so close. I could smell the bleach on those white sheets. And it woke me up. Before I knew it, I had pulled off a Klansman's hood and I just hit him in the face. I threw the first punch. The officer decided to send. Looked just like him. Do you think it was him? Don't ask me why I'm angry. Never again. I can take it from here. Go to Jessica. I'll talk to you tomorrow after my hearing. Good news. They're not pressing charges. I'm going to press charges against Tim. Breathe. You need to take a longer view. I was taking a longer view. <laughs> First thing, I'm driving you to the ER. Make sure that my, my head isn't the problem. I'm was... still taking you to the ER. They treated me like I was a criminal. Like I was nothing. I was out with a friend who we weren't doing anything wrong. They have a list of charges that contradict that. Causing a disturbance, harassment, resisting arrest. Was I arrested? You were held. You weren't actually charged with anything. You can thank the Hoffmans for that. So I should feel grateful now? That is up to you. At least there won't be anything in record. My record? I'm not supposed to have a record. I've never even been to detention. Hmm. Her father is taking her home. The son's coming up. Is she all right? Well, she's upset, but she's all right. She said you asked her to call me? Yo, I thought you knew what to do. You thought I would know. I feel like I'm gonna explode. Like, does this ever go away? No. <sighs> Why did they cuff me so tight? They must have been afraid. Of me? I, look, I, I wish I could tell you I knew how to fix this. I wish I could tell you that this will never happen again. Come on, let's get your head looked at. Dean Becker, what, what would have happened if I fought back? You know, I mean, if they're gonna say I resisted arrest, maybe I, I should have resisted. Not learn anything tonight. I learned. I learned exactly what they think of me. And all of a sudden, everything. Everything just feels impossible. That's not the lesson. Look at me. Whatever you do, you cannot let them tell you who you are. You hear me? Uh, hope you weren't waiting for me. I'm recopying an article for the Phoenix. I need to drop it off on my way to class so everyone knows where to go. Go? For the rally this weekend. <laughs> what now? We're going to march for divestment from South Africa, Saturday. I'm leading the march, not just writing about it. Enlist me. I'm done sitting on my ass. Finally! I've never seen you wear a hat before. Oh, uh, do you like? You're making it work? Uh, give me a minute, I'm almost finished. My column is going to be a weekly call to action with an outsider's perspective. You are mine? You're an outsider now? 
I guess I always was. Give me one minute. Less. There. Done. What happened to your head? Did the, did the clan come back to the campus? Some girl's father chased after you with a shotgun. <laughs> it did involve a girl. <laughs> of course it did. And a cop. What? No joke. Want to write about that? You rescued a girl from a cop. <laughs> More like the cop thought he was rescuing her from me. Just tell me what happened. Cop used my head to break a table. I need to write this down. Oh, it gets better. Go on. We were off campus in a booth at a diner, and, and for some reason, the cop decided I was a danger to society. The girl was white. You know, I don't think I mentioned that, but you think it had anything to do with it? That's a front page story. I'd be behind bars right now in your country. If you were lucky. I want details. Did you get his badge number? We're gonna do more than write about it. You know my dad's a lawyer? This isn't going away. We can protest in front of the police station. Mm. Hey, I thought I'd find you here. Obviously, this is the girl. Uh, keep her out of it. Are, are you all right? I'm fine. I'm fine. But I've, I've got class to go to and... With my dad, I know. What? You're... <laughs> Did Hoffman do that? Go to class. Please, I'll meet you there, all right? He expects me to be late anyways. <laughs> no wonder he's so tough on you. Are you okay? Nothing's broken. I'm so sorry, Terry. I didn't think any of this could have happened. Why would you? I've never been afraid of police before. You didn't care if I had money in my wallet, or a girl who wanted to be there with me, or, or a father who made law review when Shh. I was 19. You, you don't have to get upset. I'm not gonna shut up about it, Jessica. What are they gonna do, arrest me? No one tells you it hurts when they put cuffs on your wrist, and you keep feeling them after they're off. I like, should have stood up for you sooner. You shouldn't have had to. I am so sorry. No, no, I... no, it's okay. I, I gotta go to class, Terry. okay? You don't belong in this dorm. Fine, I'll get out of your way. This was a mistake. I, we can take a break. Uh, we can wait until we don't have them in the next cell. No. Semester? No, no, no. Oh. There isn't a single thing that's right about this. Don't you see? Why would you? Look, you don't have to. I, I gotta go. Your dad hates it when I walk in late, and I just, I can't. Okay, okay. I'll get out of your way. I am not sorry I met you. What's the difference between us? What happened to you? What happened to you? Nothing. I'm fine. Are you all right? I'm not dead, if that's what you mean. I was <laughs> just messed with the wrong girl. Doesn't surprise me. What's with the suitcase? You going on a trip? Seven sisters school having a same-sex debutante ball? No, no, wait. An HBCU offered you a better scholarship. Wow. Must be something, knowing everything about everything. Sorry, sorry. I didn't mean all that. It's obnoxious. Just a reflex. Your head is bleeding. Yeah, yeah, it does that. So, you visiting a sick grandma or something? How'd you guess? You're gonna miss class. I am. I am gonna miss it. Hey, hey, what the? Go, go take care of your grandma. I'll go take notes for you. You never take notes. <laughs> I will now till you get back. Don't. I'm not coming back. I know you didn't fail out of class. I'm, they need me at home. It's where I should be. Bullshit. It's a better fit anyway. What's going on here? Nothing. I. They need me. Okay, maybe they need you today or next week, but in the long run. You don't know anything about it. I know a little about it. I wouldn't mind running home right now myself. Who says I'm running? Aren't you always telling everyone to get out of their comfort zone? I'm not running. It just took me a while to figure out that this isn't the right place for me. Are you joking? You're like the poster child for higher education. That's... The nicest thing you ever said to me. <laughs> You're welcome. I just, I expected, I, I don't know what I expected, more. Are you kidding me? We've had a protest, a riot, a visit from the KKK, and a legal arrest, and it's only November? <laughs> what really happened to your head? A cop slammed my head into a table. How's that for more? Terry, why? I'm pretty sure you figured that was all it was good for. What were you doing? What was that? Oh, you think this is my fault? I was dating while black. Apparently that's illegal, at least off campus. You know, I thought I'd had it all mapped out. Foolproof plan. How not to get sucked into... Anyways, my dad was wrong. Nothing's foolproof. Are you okay? 
No. No, I'm not. But I'm awake. What was that quote about a black man with justice in his mouth and... What the... Did you just hug me? Sorry, I didn't... I, no, it's okay. <clears throat> We're listening. Not as much as I should have been. You're gonna be really late. Yeah, well, what else is new? Why defy expectations? No, I'm sick of that shit. Why shouldn't I defy expectations? You do? Look, whatever's going on with you, Angela, you have to work it out fast. No bullshit. If you don't belong here, I sure as hell don't. And I'm not going anywhere. Go do whatever it is you have to do, but then get back here, okay? And help me fix the shit that's not living up to your expectations. I can't do it alone. Albert, how was the hearing? I resigned. What? They said I was lucky. No one was accusing me of anything, but I had to promise that what happened outside of the lecture would never happen again, and I can't make that promise. You can't quit. The KKK has headquarters one town away, and I don't know what I'll do next time. Why do I always have to be better? It's, it's a relief, actually. Uh, you'll come back to teaching, then. You were the best professor the history department ever had. You're not listening to me. I learned so much from you. Many years ago. I still learn from you. That isn't a reason to stay. My self-interest is not your self-interest. You've been reading Farrakhan. A little bit, yeah. And sometimes our self-interest is the same. Sometimes. That's why I went to the lecture. I thought I was going to teach him something. Point out that when he scapegoats the Jews, he's playing right into the hands of the white supremacists. That's what they want, to make us think we're on different sides. You thought you were going to teach him that? I never got a chance. Two minutes into his speech, people were on their feet cheering for this man who called my faith a gutter religion. I couldn't breathe. Just like that, I was 11 again in Danzig squeezed tight in the middle of a chanting crowd, blaming us for everything. I had to get out, find the doors as fast as I could. I opened them, and outside it was worse. There they were, in their robes, and I couldn't see Jessica anywhere. I couldn't find her. I couldn't think about anything else, just Jessica. How do I protect her? I thought I could if I sent her away, but I can't. I can't protect her. I'm the hypocrite, Albert. My work, everything I've been teaching, I would let the world fall apart to save her. Why didn't you tell me? I was ashamed. When did I become that person? You mean a parent? She looks so much like Cecile now. She does. Is she all right after last night? So many tears. We can't protect them from that. What will you do? I don't know yet. Organize. The girls are grown. I don't need to stay in one place. I actually thought one day I'd be university president. It's time to leave the bubble. I don't want this anymore. It isn't real life. I can do more than this. I, you know, I've been jealous of you for a long time, but I'm not anymore. Would you one last time teach for me today? I haven't been sleeping. It would help me. Tell them about our adventures. Uh, you've become a bit of a hero. Me? A hero? Uh, since you faced down the KKK. I'm not even supposed to be here. What are they going to do, fire you? <laughs> Albert, I don't know where I'd be, who I'd be who my family would be without you. Don't become a stranger. No, but we aren't the same. We never were. Sorry. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, we have a guest lecturer. I think you know him, Albert Becker, my oldest and dearest friend and my teacher. He will preside. I've been struck down by sudden laryngitis. That way, I'm sorry I'm late. I Please, come in. <clears throat> Dean Becker, I, sir, I owe you an apology. I never should have come at you that way. I am so sorry. There's nothing to be sorry about. I didn't understand who you were, 
who you are. Thank you. Professor Hoffman, he wants me to teach a class today. How do I do that when I'm unprepared? Maybe that's the lesson. We're never really prepared. We take on the work anyway, and we don't turn our backs. We don't run and hide or lie down. We just start. We start again and again. Have a good class, everyone. It is not your responsibility to finish the work, but neither are you free to desist from it. See, you don't need me. They do. Look, get them ready, then you send them my way, and I will be grateful for the help. I need a moment. Hey, I was planning on taking notes for you. Yeah, I thought about that, and it didn't seem like a great idea. I should do it myself. I would have asked Katie. She takes the best notes, but I'll take notes for her. Who's going to take care of your grandma, then? This is where she'd want me, <clears throat> at least for now. Look at the person sitting next to you. Would you risk everything for this stranger? What if you stop thinking of them as a stranger?